1974 of the Third Age, the Kingdom of Arthurdine, all that was left of Arnor, was finally overrun by the Witch King of Angmar and his forces. The following year, an army from Gondor led by Prince Aenor arrived in Lindon, and at the Battle of Fornost, the Witch King was soundly defeated, and in the campaign that followed, Angmar was completely destroyed. But instead of rebuilding Arthurdine, the Dúnedain went into hiding, and became the Rangers of the North. So in this video, we ask the question, why didn't the Dúnedain rebuild Arnor earlier? To give some more historical context to the framing question, in the winter of 1974, the Witch King overtacked and overran Arthurdine. He conquered Fornost, and King Arvidui was forced to flee north to the Ice Bay of Forakel, while his sons and the remnants of his people fled west into Lindon. When Aranarth, the eldest of Arvidui's sons, got word that his father was hiding in Forakel, he requested Círdan to send a ship north to retrieve the exiled king. Although the ship made it to the bay, it never left being destroyed in a storm, killing Arvidui and sending two of the Palantiri, the Stone of Anubinas and the Stone of Amonsul, to the bottom of the sea. Meanwhile, an army from Gondor had been dispatched north by sea, and they arrived in 1975, led by Prince Aenor. This army, alongside the Elves of Lindon and the remnants of the Men of Arnor, marched west and engaged the Witch King's forces in the fields before Fornost. The Witch King's forces were no match, the decisive moment was when the Northmen cavalry circled down from the north, smashing into the flank of Angmar's army. The Witch King abandoned the field, but was overtaken before he could put together any defense of Angmar, and after a confrontation with Aenor and Glorfindel, he opted to flee the north instead. In his absence, Angmar was so thoroughly destroyed that not a man or orc of that land still remained west of the Misty Mountains. But despite Angmar now being destroyed, Despite the fact that the threat had seemingly passed, Aranarth, now technically the King of Arthurdine, opted not to claim the title. Instead, he claimed the title of Chieftain of the Dúnedain, and instead of rebuilding their kingdom, the remaining Dúnedain went into hiding, becoming the Rangers of the North. Instead of openly defending the lands of Eriador, they would now fight a shadow war against any enemies that would dare harm it. The heirs of the Chieftains would be fostered in Rivendell, alongside the heirlooms of the Kingdom of Arnor. Over time, the memory of Arnor would fade, the old ruins would crumble, and the rangers would come to be regarded as strange and untrustworthy. But why? So the reason Tolkien gives us in the appendices is quite simple, and it makes sense. The Dúnedain had become few, and the peoples of Eriador were greatly diminished in the war. After the war, what strength would still remain? If Arthurdine decided to continue the kingdom and take up his seat in Fornost, would there even be enough people around to fully populate the city? Would Arthurdine even really have an army left? You might say to that, well, yeah, they would start off weak, but with Angmar destroyed and no immediate threats, surely the kingdom would gradually recover, right? And yeah, that's true, and considering the Watchful Peace began shortly afterwards, it's possible that Arthurdine could have recovered reasonably well over the next 400 years. But we have the benefit of hindsight. At the time, Aranarth probably believed that continuing Arthurdine and regathering his people at one place would put a target on them. After all, Sauron had dispatched the Witch King to destroy Arnor once. There's no reason to believe that he wouldn't try to do it again. Sure, Angmar had been destroyed, but there were plenty of orcs and other creatures in the Misty Mountains that could be weaponized against the remaining Dúnedain. He wouldn't even really need a big army. Instead, to ensure his people's survival, Aranarth opted for the route that would draw less attention. Instead of fortifying cities, they would build remote homes and settlements in the wild. Instead of roaming around in armed companies, they would operate individually or as small groups from the shadows. That way, they could still try to protect Eriador and its remaining inhabitants, without drawing the attention of the Dark Lord, or any other powers. This, of course, came with a price. The Dúnedain did continue to dwindle, and it was a harsh life that was fraught with danger. Even the chieftains themselves weren't immune, as four of them were recorded as being slain. One to wolves, one to trolls, one to orcs, and one cause of death is unknown. On top of that, the Dúnedain would end up facing discrimination from the very people they were protecting, notably the Men of Bree. And when Boromir states that Gondor has been defending the Westlands without praise, Aragorn points out that the Dúnedain of the North have experienced the exact same thing. 
But while this is an entirely practical, logical reason for Aranaf to have discontinued Arphidine, is it the only reason? While we don't have access to what Aranaf thought during this time, there is something that surrounded the end of Arnor that Aranaf had to have known, something that would have been hard to ignore, and that was prophecy. And this brings us to a man named Malbeth the Seer. Malbeth the Seer was a man of Arnor, clearly of Dunedain heritage. His exact date of birth and death is unknown, but we know that he was alive between two dates, 1864 of the Third Age and at least 1964. On that first date, the date of King Arvidui's birth, Malbeth, speaking to Prince Arafant, gave a famous prophecy. Arvidui you shall call him, for he will be the last in Arfidine. Though a choice will come to the Dunedain, and if they take the one that seems less hopeful, then your son will change his name and become king of a great realm. If not, then much sorrow and many lives of men shall pass, until the Dunedain arise and are united again. For context, Arvidui means last king in Sindarin. As for the choice, Malbeth is referring to the death of King Onderhof Gondor and both his heirs, and Arvidui's attempt to claim the throne of both kingdoms through his wife Firiel, who was Onderhof's daughter. But Arvidui was the less hopeful choice, and his claim was rejected by the lords of Gondor, who instead chose the victorious general Aeonil. And so, according to Malbeth's prophecy, there would be much sorrow and plenty of time would pass before the Dúnedain arose and were reunited again. He's referring to Aragorn here. As you can see, Malbeth's prophecy came true. But there's also the second prophecy, spoken between 1964 and 1974 of the Third Age during the reign of Arvidui. This is a prophecy that Aranaf would have been present for. Over the land there lies a long shadow, westward reaching wings of darkness, the tower trembles to the tombs of kings, doom approaches, the dead awaken, for the hour is come for the oath breakers, at the stone of Erech thou shalt stand again, and here there are horn in the hills ringing. Who shall the horn be? Who shall call them from the grey twilight? The forgotten people, the heir of him to whom the oath they swore, from the north shall he come, need shall drive him, he shall pass the door to the paths of the dead. In this prophecy, Malbeth is obviously referring to the War of the Ring, Sauron's attack on Gondor, and then the heir of Isildur walking the paths of the dead to summon the Oathbreakers to finally fight against Sauron. So from these two prophecies, Aranarth has learned some vital information, that it's going to be many years before the Dúnedain arise again and are potentially reunited, and that the heir of Isildur is going to play an important part in that. Given the accuracy of Malbeth's first prophecy, it's likely that Aranarth decided against testing fate. Arvidui was quite clearly meant to be the last king, and it would be unwise to go against that given the final part of the prophecy did offer some hope to the Dúnedain. And given the accuracy of Malbeth's first prophecy, it's likely that Aranarth decided to put stock in it, and perhaps this is why the chieftain's sons were always fostered in Rivendell, starting with Aranarth's own son, Arahael. While it's not a bulletproof method to continue the line of chieftains, it was a way to ensure that the chieftain or his heir would not die as a child. In the end, this worked, although only just. When Araphorn II was killed by orcs, Aragorn, the future King Alessar, was a mere two years old. So in conclusion, the greatest reason to not continue Arnor was the practical reason. There weren't enough people left, and attempting to continue the kingdom might put a target on its head which it would not have the strength to defend against. The second reason is more esoteric. Armed with knowledge of Malbeth's prophecies, Aranarth knew that the day of the final conflict, the final test of the Dúnedain, was still a ways off, and that the heir of Isildur would play a part in that conflict. Thus, the best way for the Dúnedain to survive, the best way for there to still be an heir of Isildur come the Day of Doom, would be for the northern Dúnedain to become the rangers of the north, to hide in the shadows, and gradually be forgotten. It was not a glorious fate, but perhaps it was what needed to be done. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it or at least found it interesting. I scrolled back through the videos I had released in 2024, and I realised I hadn't done a video on Arnor this year, which would simply not do. But of course, I've now done so many videos on Arnor that I'm kind of running out of things to talk about. I had to think about this one for a while, but in the end, I think it ended up as a decent topic. Cheers, farewell, and remember, don't take advice from modern seers, they're usually con artists. Take your advice from healing crystals instead.